he watched. The wheeling adders boil, till from the foam his dazzled eyes beheld the reaver demon rise. The 1800 was metal as fu- Hello, we are Luca and Julia and this is the Miniature Bestiary. Today we will be building, painting and talking about a peculiar beast from the Irish folklore, the Kelpie. But first, a little bit of context. We started painting miniatures at the beginning of 2021 and after a while we thought to share some of our creation with the web and create a series of videos called the Miniature Bestiary. Themes and topics of our channel will be varied, yet we play Pathfinder 2nd edition together, so all of our videos about miniatures will be sharing some features. Which are 28mm in scale, on an appropriate base for the sheet rules, so 20, 25, 50, 75 or 100mm round bases. Features in one of the Pathfinder 2nd edition best series. And to make things a little more interesting, we decided to agree on a couple of non-game related guidelines. Our creation will be inspired by the season in which the video will be published. We will try to avoid paid STL and keep things as cheap and simple as possible. So, let's get to work! My section is dedicated to the mythological and literary background behind the creatures we will show and paint. Mythological creatures always fascinated me as a product of both human fears and respect for nature. They are also a cultural product and they often change in time, so it is not surprising to find them or a version of them in the most popular role-playing games. We decided to start with Kelpies because they are Scottish folklore creatures and we wanted to celebrate the fall about to come with something that reminded us how beautiful it would be to enjoy a cold evening before a fireplace, drinking a good scotch and because ponies are always a good idea. Kelpies are supernatural water horses that were said to haunt the foggy locks and rivers of Scotland. They appeared to travelers and people who walked alone on the riverbanks in the form of a dark grey or white horses with wet mane and invited humans to ride on their back. Once the unfortunate traveler trusted the animal, the Kelpie would not hesitate to draw its victim along in a watery grave. This is just the scene we wanted to recreate in our miniature. There is action, there is the possibility to have fun adding details as seaweeds or the flow of water, but it is also the best way to represent Kelpie's supernatural and some way fiendish nature, doing their thing. Kelpies are said to have also a human form, which they adopt sometimes when they want to have more fun with those strangely curious and silly humans. They can materialize as a beautiful young woman ready to seduce inexperienced and naive young man, or in the very, very different form of a big, hairy and angry man who wants nothing but to grip his woolly hands around your neck until your last breath. Well, if this is not a bipolar disorder. Similar creatures haunted many mythologies as the Scandinavian one with its backhassen, literally water horse. But the Scottish creature is maybe the most iconic one, as it has been fertile ground for modern legendary creatures as Nessie, the Loch Ness Monster, which is nothing but a 2.0 version of the good old Kelpie. Fun fact! Kelpies as Loch Ness's monster are also in New Scamander's Fantastic Beast and where to find them, where it is revealed that Nessie is nothing but a bored Kelpie enjoying making fun of the muggles. One of the most famous modern representations of Kelpies is the Andy Scott sculpture The Kelpies, located between Falkirk and Grangemouth in Scotland. Two 30 meter high horse heads representing the strength of Scottish values and economy in their daytime and ready to party at night. 
But now it's time to take our brushes and acrylic colors and to have fun with this funny four-footed guy. The first thing was to search for an inspiration. The reference image from the Pathfinder Best Cherry 2 is something I really don't like. It seems like a generic swamp monster, too green, too stubby, and it doesn't emit that aura of mischief, alien beauty and cruel wit that someone would expect from an evil shape-changing fee. It resembles more of a mindless horse-like Trent or Dryad rather than a scheming, dangerous siren of the lakes. It was clear that I'd had to search elsewhere. The Kelpie sculpture by Andy Scott that Julia talked about before, it's a good start. The idea of the shape-shifting horse prancing out of the water to surprise an unsuspecting victim is way more interesting than the muscular pony in the bestiary. Muscular and fee are a couple of words that really clashes badly, in my opinion. Another great rendition of the Kelpie can be found in the Fiend Folio from the 3rd edition of Dungeons & Dragons. The still water, sickly greenish skin, round bulbous eyes and the dead seaweed that covers the face, as well as the fact that, well, we can only see a small portion of the creature itself, adds to the mysterious and mischievous nature of the fee. It's an incredibly good artwork. Me and Julia also drew a Kelpie for Inktober a couple of years ago. I'm not at all a good artist, uh, she's, well, a lot better than me, yet trying to recreate that wet, swampy look would work wonders, I think. Still, every one of these lacked a bit of dynamism, which I think is necessary for a tabletop miniature depicted in a combat environment. With this in mind, I searched the web for a suitable STL file to print with my 3D printer, and I came up with some really good options. First, I found this. It was a strong candidate, uh, the pose is dynamic, is slender and elegant enough to pass as a fee, yet uncanny enough not to be mistaken for a simple horse. On top, it would require minimal modification to work as intended. Then this, dynamic, and the sculpted muscles would make for a great undeadly drowny look. Also, the face looked menacing enough without passing up for a mindless brute. And you would never mistake this for a normal horse, yet the flaming mane would be a nightmare to adapt in a watery way, uh, so to speak. No pun intended. Another route I was considering was to print a normal, good sculpt of a horse and then adapt it to look more like um, a Kelpie. This uh, was a strong candidate, with a good dynamic pose and a mate that I could easily modify to look like seaweed. But then I came across this. It's a sculpture, or well, rather a scan of a sculpture in Vienna, depicting a man trying to tame a wild horse. Usually a real-life sculpture doesn't work well as gaming miniatures, they're not dynamic enough, or, since they are way bigger than a miniature, their details are comparably too small to render well on such a small scale. But this was an exception. The scene has incredible movement, and the hands of the man, tangled in the horse's mane, give the impression of an epic fight between the man and the beast. Immediately, both Julia and I thought of a victim lured by the Kelpie into the water, too late realizing his mistake and desperately wrestling with the beast to save his own life. It was perfect. Well, not perfect. The lower part of the sculpt with the shield and the completely naked figure was too statue-y for our taste, and we completely lacked the water element. So I decided to try a little experiment. I scaled the sculpt to the correct size and only printed the upper part of the miniature, using a plain 50mm base and a random 28mm scale STL as a reference. The idea was to represent the Kelpie while prancing out of the water, similar to Andy Scott's sculpture. 
It would help to set the miniature in a water environment and cancel out every detail we didn't like in the lower part of the sculpture. The first print didn't came out as well as I hoped. It has strange line all over the bottom of the miniature, probably because I didn't clean the 3D printer as thoroughly as I should have. The second one came out great, but unfortunately I broke his leg while removing it from the plate. Nothing that a little dot of superglue cannot solve anyway. Voila, good as new. Then I came in with a Rattlecan black primer and a white Zenithal on top. Zenithal priming is a technique uh, that consists in spraying a lighter color, in this case white, on the top of the miniature after spraying it black. This helps you to see more details in your miniature and, well, helps you paint it better. Some also says that this zenithal priming shows under the translucent colors of the acrylic on top, but if I'm being honest I don't see that much of a difference. Then it was time for the base coating. I started with an off-white, mixing white and a bit of a sickly green, to get what will be the highlights of the horse and I will darken them later. I slapped it on the mini without being very careful uh, because, well, if any error occurs, I will always be able to fix it later. Also, you can see that the coverage of the white is not that great. I will need another coat, but that was to be expected. For the skin of the man, I opted for a completely opposite approach. I started with the shadows, mixing a dark um, flesh color with a bit of red and slapped it all over his body. Being more careful this time because I didn't want to ruin the previous work on the horse. For the shadows of the horse I mixed a bit of grey and a bit of violet, yet it was not dark enough, so I added just a little drop of pure black. I put this darker bluish muted grey uh, down in the recesses where uh, the light would not shine and the lake underneath would reflect a bit of blue on the body of the horse. Then, when it was still a bit wet, I mixed this blue with the original off-white to do the mid-tone, trying to blend it with the base coat I did early. To get the mid-tone on the human, I used the original dark skin tone and, well, slapped it all over, except where the recesses were more pronounced in which I kept the original red. Then, using a small detail brush and lightening the color with a bit of yellow, I did the highlights, being careful to paint only the part that would be directly hit by sunlight. For doing the mane, I mixed a turquoise and a browny yellow, still too clear, so I added a bit of brown to get that seaweed look that I was looking for. I was pretty satisfied with this, yet I had to be very careful not to mess up the highlights that, well, I spent so much time in doing. For doing this I had to switch my brush a couple of times and get uh, the small details with a more precise detail brush. For the shadows of the mane I instead decided to use a wash, uh, a brown wash to be precise, that I just put everywhere the green was showing, the mane and the part of the tail that was still out of the water. I then mixed the original green with a bit of yellow to do the highlights, a very very bright yellow, and I am quite satisfied with the result. You can see here I had to switch brush more than one time to avoid messing up the details underneath. Now the monster was Pretty much taken shape, I was pretty satisfied. Only two details remain. The cloth that was wrapped around 
the map, I used a very muted blue, highlighted with the same blue mixed with some white, and the hair of the man, for which I used a light brown, darkened with the same brown wash that I used earlier, and highlighted with an even lighter brown. I cannot find the footage, but I also did the eyes of both the man and the Kelpie. For the Kelpie I used a very shiny red with a pink little dot dead center of it, that gave it a great otherworldly shine. The man was not the focus point of the work, so I just did a little black dot in the center of his eyes. Other details were made at this point, like for example the hooves, uh, painted black and highlighted with the blue I used earlier for the cloth. Then it was time for basing. I glued the miniature on his 50mm base and glued on it a bit of musk that I had from a local shop. The intention was for it to act as seaweed, uh, partially tangled uh, between the man and the horse itself. Beforehand, Julia and I made this prototype for the base. It was made just using PVA glue and a bit of green, blue and brown ink. But it was too light for our taste, so when we did it again, we added just a single drop of black ink. Well, this was a big mistake. You will see why later. Then we masked the miniature using a bit of electrical tape and poured all the PVA glue mixed with the ink directly on the base itself. I also added a bit of bubbles here and there that will make the base dry up with a bit of movement. And here you can see why the black was a bad idea. It dried completely pitch tar black. And, well, it was not at all the effect that we were hoping for. Anyway, we tried to salvage it. We slapped on it a coat of azure, done very, very hastily, and thinned down a fair bit to get that watery and uneven look. And we added, when the paint was still wet, a dark wash on it. Being not too precise, uh, the intent in here was to recreate some um, moving water, so we didn't have to be precise at all. We finished it with a light white dry brushing on top, that sold the effect pretty well. We were completely sure that we ruined the mini with that mistake earlier, but the overall effect was not bad. Then I painted the rim of the base black. I usually coat my minis in a matte varnish after finished the paint job. Yet, in this case, being a water creature, we thought that a gloss varnish would work better. There was still a lot of imprecision in the base and I wanted to uh, cover them a bit with PVA glue or something else, but Julia thought that they sold the idea of moving water very well. So we did what we always do, we argued for a bit, weighted the pros and the cons, and then did as she said. Overall it was a nice experiment, we were pretty happy with the result, it's one of the first time I paint without using a wash all over the miniature, and, and I really like the overall outcome. This is the start of a nice adventure for us. You can see that we are, well, far from being good. The camera walk is not great, the colors are all over the place, and I am far from being a, well, even a decent painter. Still, it could have been worse. The mini came out fine, and I'm pretty happy about the video too. If you have any questions or comment or suggestions about our work, you can leave them down in the comment section below. So. 
This was our Kelpie. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, you can like, subscribe, and stay tuned for other future videos. <laughs>